So, we're going to talk about... Hi, good evening, Ayesha. So, anybody here? Talks Arabic? I've noticed we have Ayesha here. Who, who among the participants knows how to speak Arabic? Hey, Teresa, that's the first time I saw you. <laughs> it's been like two months already that we know each other. Three Last months year. We've been talking. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen you. You said you're going to turn on your camera. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to share my screen, guys. Hope you'll learn a lot. It's one of the topics that came out uh, this November. It's about the increased ICP, and then we all know uh, neuro disorders such as CBA, um, multiple sclerosis, MG, those uh, conditions like aneurysm, it will really lead to increased ICP. So this topic is really helpful, and I hope you will learn a lot. If you have any questions, you can ask me uh, anytime by raising your hand or just turning on your mic, don't be scared. There's no such thing as stupid question, guys. So don't be scared. I'm open to any type of question. And if you don't want to talk, you can just raise your hand, type your answer. You know, you can do anything you do want. You can dance so we can see you. So it's a free country. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to start my lecture, guys. Uh, tell me if you can see my screen, please. Uh, type number one, if you can see my screen. Number one, yes, sir. Okay, perfect. All right. So we're going to start with increased ICP. Before we start with the increased ICP, we have to go back to the foundation. So when we talk about increased ICP, who among you here knows the focus of increased ICP? What is the most essential ingredient for increased ICP, guys? Type your answer. It is very important in the body because it maintains or protects our brain. What we call that fluid. Very good, ma'am. Jilo, Jilo, Jilo. Sorry for my pronunciation. I don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe it's Jilo. Very good. It's the CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid. Very good. One point for ma'am Jilo. Anyways, um. If you if you want, you can message us. We can also give you a review materials here in concise. You can see it. There's a lot of uh, materials that you can be used for the for the sub, and you can also use that for your NCLEX. Where is the CSF being produced? Go. What area in our body or in our CNS produces CSF? What you call that area? Clue. It starts with a very good brolin. It's in our choroid plexus. Yeah. It is in the choroid plexus of our ventricle. So remember, guys, our CSF is produced in the choroid plexus. Yeah. So we're going to place an arrow here. Question. How much does our choroid plexus produce every day? How much? How many ml per day? Very good, Mom Charlotte. It's 500 ml per day. Yeah. And that is equivalent to how many? How much ICP? That is equivalent to the normal ICP, which is 5 to 15 mm Hg. The 500 ml per day, that is equivalent to 5 to 15 mmHg per day, or 80 to 180 mmH2O. Yeah. So for those who doesn't know this, I know you already know this, by the way, sorry for my bad word, choice of words. For those who are already familiar with this, but has a problem with organizing, just remember the functions of our CSF. Don't forget it's NCP. The clue here is NCP. The first function, the, our CSF is the one who provides nutrients to our brain and spinal cord. Take note, our CSF is the one that provides nutrients to our brain and spinal cord. So what are these nutrients that is needed by our brain and spinal cord? Just remember these are GAP. Our clue here is GAP. G stands for glucose, A stands for albumin, and 
B stands for proteins. These are the essential nutrients that is needed by our brain and spinal cord. So just remember the glucose, albumin, and protein. Yeah. Next, C. The purpose of letter C that is for cautioning our brain from any trauma or injury. One of the purpose of our CSF is to protect our brain from trauma and injury. Yeah. And letter P, one of their purpose is to protect our CNS from infection. So there are our there are antibodies inside the CSF so that our brain and spinal cord will be protected from any types of pathogens. When I talk about pathogens, these are what we call foreign bodies that causes disease or illnesses. So these are the different purpose of our CSF. Let me start it again. CSF or the cerebrospinal fluids, they are produced in the choroid plexus at a rate of 500 ml per day. So for the 500 ml per day, the normal ICP that is equivalent to 5 to 15 mmHg or that is 80 to 180 mmHg. So what's the purpose of your CSF? Number one, nutrients. Number two, cautioning. Number three, to protect our CNS from any infection or pathogens. <clears throat> so what's the color of your CSF, guys? What's the color of CSF? Is it here? <laughs> Very good. Take note, the CSF should be color clear. Wala siyang color, it should be clear. Board is up, thank you po, Ma'am Judy. Board is up question. A patient got a vehicular accident and there's a clear fluid draining from the ears and the nose. How would you know that there is a presence of CSF? How would you know that there's a presence of CSF? Walang ibang sagot kundi test for glucose. Very good. You have to test that for glucose. Yeah. You need to test it for glucose. How would you know it's positive for glucose? How would you know it's positive for glucose? There will be positive halo sign. There will be positive halo sign. So, why is there CSF leaking in our ears and in the nose? Anong classic fracture happens in that patient? What kind of fracture happened to that patient? Anong classic fracture, guys? Clue, it is, it is a bone structure in your head. What do you call that structure? Very good. The, yes, it's a skull fracture, sorry. Hola. Yes, it is a skull fracture, but what kind of fracture? What kind of fracture? Skull base. Yes, it's the base, and we call that the basilar fracture. Yeah. And I remember when I took my NCLEX, it's one of the questions na lumabas. What kind of fracture is expected for a patient who has CSF coming out from the nose and ears? Walang imang sagot, kundi basilar fracture. And that's it, guys. So we already know the foundation of your CSF. So NCP, clear, test for glucose, positive halo sign, and there's a basilar fracture. Guys, when we talk about CSF, it's a fluid. There's a place that produces it, and there should also a place where to drain it. Saan dinidrain ang ating CSF? Which part dinidrain ang ating CSF? So first letter. F. Nadidrain siya sa foramen. Go. Oh, clue nyo na yan. 
So, ano nilidrain ang ating CSF? So, every time the corn plexus produces a CSF, very good. The foramen of Monroe. Yan. Second, letter A. The aqueduct. Very good. The aqueduct of Silvius or Silvia. And the last, pinaka common to, the subarachnoid space. And that's it. We already know where these 